Right, so I did end up switching out my record store job for studying. Because I might as well just focus on my grades since I'm so far ahead in stats. I'm actually got like average grades going on right now and so much money. So I don't actually need the work. And a lot of sleep otherwise. So let's start an event. Oh. Actually, now that I'm here, I'm wondering. Are we going to get the romantic professor dream? Because, I mean, we haven't so far because we've been interested in the ladies. But now we're after Rakesh, so... Prop X Max? Let's see what happens. I snag a good seat, prepared for another class. I sometimes can't believe they still let Professor Task teach here. I guess that's the power of tenure. I wonder what he's going to get into today. Alright, you little money sack, sit down. Let's get this started. Everyone quiets down, settling in their seats. The professor turns on a projector and starts displaying slides. The slides seem to be displaying a countryside. A few buildings dot it. As he progresses through the slides, we see a bunch of people standing in front of buildings and posing. Professor, are we just looking at your vacation slides? What's your point? I am trying to get to a point. If certain noisy know-nothings would stop interrupting me. I sit back in my seat. Not believing we're actually looking at a professor's vacation slides. Oh, I'm sorry, Max. Is my lecture boring you? Perhaps you'd like to give a better one. Come on, get down here. I think it is, because we would have had the jade monkey thing already. Oh. Uh. I stand up from my desk, walking down to stand in front of the professor. He looks down at me, that stern stare in his eyes. Yes! Prop X Max! I've had my eye on you for a while now, Max. I've been watching you and hoping that you would blossom into the full and glorious student I know you could be. I look quizzically at the professor. I had no idea he had such an interest in me. His smoldering brown eyes are boring a hole into me. Well, I wanted to do my best for you, professor. No, you didn't, Max. But that was part of the fun. <laughs> You're a wild stallion to be tamed, boy. And I think I've got just the bit and bridle for you. <laughs> oh my. This is, uh, this is escalating quite quickly. <laughs> Max's face? <laughs> Suddenly, the professor takes me into his arms. You are the one for me, Max. You are the one who can take my instruction, and I only teach pleasure. When I'm done, you will know pleasure, and how to please better than any other person before you. The professor hugs me close, looking down into my eyes. I don't see how, you guys are like the same height. Will you complete me, Max? Will you be the pupil I need to complete this circle? I can feel warmth creeping up my neck. I bury my head in the professor's coat. Except his love. Yes, Professor Task. Teach me how to love. <laughs> and so much more, Max. And so much more. Let us start right now, my love. <laughs> the professor leans me back over his podium. I'm vaguely aware of the rest of the class looking at us, but mostly I'm just lost in his eyes. He is my master now. And I cannot wait to find out what new lessons he will have for me. The professor's lips approach mine, inching slowly, torturously closer until they're almost touching. With a start, I lift my head off my desk. I can't believe I fell asleep. What the hell was that dream? <laughs> and that's why you should always be aware of what kind of cheese you're buying in foreign countries. See, I told you I was getting to a point. Yay! I'm glad we had that. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Bridal and bit. Whew. Man, things are just so spicy on Rakesh's route. Time's running short to get my plans in motion. I need to get a great poster out to let people know what I'm doing. I think it's time I talk to Rakesh. Yep. I head down the hall, formulating my game plan as I go. 
I knock on Rakesh's door, thinking about what kind of poster he might make. Max, my dear, come in. My dear. Hey, sweetie. <laughs> I give Rakesh a quick peck on the cheek as I enter his room. Good grief. Let's get right to business. I need to commission you. What? What for? Have you heard about this party Anne's throwing? My band's going to be playing. Oh. Yeah, she invited me just the other day. That is incredibly exciting, Max. Yes, let us design a poster for your outing. Speak to me, Max. Speak to me of music. Rakesh spins with a flourish and walks over toward his easel, placing a new sheet of paper on it. He's a very silly person sometimes. I sit down on his bed and watch as he stares at the paper, waiting for me to talk first. It's just us, Rakesh. Back alley flash. We just want something simple that tells folks we're playing. It's already going to be a party. We just want our fans to know we're going to be there. Hmm. I suppose I can do something like that. That seems almost tame for you, Max. Rakesh starts sketching on his paper, making wild marks across everywhere. I can't really tell what's on it. A few minutes later, he turns to look at me. He gestures toward a big white space toward the top of the poster. What do you think? I can put your portraits up here. Or I can put something more... imaginative. I trust you, Rakesh. It's just a simple poster. You don't need our pictures on it. Just draw something great. Rakesh grins at me and starts sketching into the white space. This will take a while. I will have your posters ready to distribute tomorrow. I will even put them up around for you. Oh, thank you! All right, Rakesh, it's in your hands now. I know you'll do great, babe. <laughs> have faith in you. Taking care of business, studying, sleeping, study, 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 well, sleep, study. Studying too much, my eyes are hurting, they're burning, but my great stats are rising. And now I can help her cash. Hooray. Back in my room at last. Just as I'm putting my keys on my desk, there's a knock on my door. Max, you have to help me. They have outwitted me. I stand with my keys in hand, staring at Rakesh. Who's outwitted you? My parents. They're going to be video calling me in 20 minutes. Uh, so? So? The letter I wrote them. They're not coming, but they still want to check up on me. You have to help me. I look down at the keys in my hand for a moment before answering. Alright, no more skipping. Alright, Rakesh, what do you want to do? I mean, it's just a phone call. It's not like they can hurt you through the phone, even if it's a video conference. Uh, I don't know. I have to convince them that I'm okay here, and there's no need to worry. And, um, that I'm still on the medical track. I thought we agreed you were going to tell them the truth about what you were doing. I, um... May have chicken out a little on that. I sort of told them the truth. I told them that I was studying art and really enjoying it. I just also told them that I was still studying medicine. <sighs> I shake my head at him. That just complicates things. I know, but it would be terrible to tell them the whole truth. Ah, uh, fine. What do you want to do? I am quite glad you asked. Fifteen minutes later, Rakesh is standing in front of his laptop with a webcam attached. We're sitting in Anne's room, which is probably the cleanest looking of all the rooms here. I'm not sure how he convinced Anne to leave, but it's just the two of us in here. <laughs> okay. Rakesh has strewn various charts and graphs around the room, and I'm lying in bed with a cold compress on my head. Not to mention a rather hastily put together paint job that's supposed to make me look like a sick person, but mostly makes me look like a Martian. You really think this is going to work? It must, Max. I think we can pull this off. Together. Just a few moments later, his video conferencing software bleeps at him, and Rakesh hurriedly tucks me into the bed. Okay, here we go. Remember, I'm the competent medical student, and you are my patient. Uh... I moan in a sickly fashion, and Rakesh gives me a thumbs up. A video screen pops up on his computer, and I can just barely make out the blurry image of Rakesh's parents. I quickly lay my head back down, though, so I look more like I'm resting. 
Rakesh says something in Urdu that I assume is a greeting. Then his parents say something back. Are you sure? I do not mind. I have not had much chance to speak my native tongue lately. His parents say something back, and Rakesh just nods, continuing in English. Well, this is my office, where I keep my computer. As you can see, I have a patient here right now, so I cannot talk too loudly. Huh? Oh yes, it is very normal for one such as I, who is moving so well along the path to earning my doctorate. I must prove my skills, after all. I try not to roll my eyes. He's really overselling it. Hmm. Oh no, my patient is very comfortable, I'm sure. After all, I do my best to attend to their needs whenever they arise. Uh, whenever they arise... Crap, that was my cue! <coughs> I cough loudly, moaning in a sickly fashion and trying to roll around. Ah, just a moment, I will be right back. Oh, the pain! And also the misery! So much of that as well! I am in both pain and misery. Also a little hungry, but that seems irrelevant compared to the pain and also misery. <laughs> You're even worse than Anne was, Mag, oh my goodness. Rakesh glares at me for a moment while he pretends to check my charts. I try not to laugh. I feel a little bad about the hammy acting. Finally, Rakesh puts one of those blood pressure dealies on my arm and a stethoscope on my chest. I don't think that's how those things are used, but I cough a few times to make it seem good. Oh my goodness. Your pressure is 190 over 24, and your fever is 55 degrees Celsius. We must boost your fluid stat. I am so sorry, father, mother, but I will have to call you back another time. My patient here may be collapsing. I gurgle a little and fall back limp. I really hope this helps. Though part of me really hope it doesn't. These kinds of theatrics can't last forever. Um... What? Um... What do you mean, what am I doing? I am tending to a patient, as we in medical training do. Um... Of course this is real. What else... What else could it be? Well... I guess these kind of theatrics don't last very long at all. Rikosh is floundering. I open my eyes and see him sweating bullets looking at the screen. I guess the jig is up. I sit up in the bed, removing the cold compress and trying to smear some of the paint off my face. Okay, that's about enough of that. Look, Rikesh's parents. Sorry I don't know your names, and I don't understand Urdu either. Rikesh tries to move his arms to stop me, but seems too horrified to move. But here's the gist. Your boy here hates medicine. It's not his bag. He's not into it, you understand? It's great that you want him to be a doctor, but he wants to be an artist. And he's actually got talent, too. So you can either sit there stifling your kid until he explodes, or you can step off and let your son grow into the man he's meant to be. <sighs> Yes, yes it is true. I'm sorry to both of you, but my heart is not in medicine. It is not who I am meant to be. Hmm... No, this is not one of my childish whims. I know this in my heart. I know what I am in my heart, and a doctor is not it. For the next few minutes, there is little else but yelling coming from the other side of the internet connection. Rikesh stands next to me with the pained look every child gets when they're yelled at by their parents. I feel for him, but I know it had to be done. I reach out and take Rikesh's hand surreptitiously by the covers, where it can't be seen by the camera. Rikesh smiles down at me, nodding and looking a little stronger. Yes, I understand, Father. Perhaps we both require more time to cool down. I will speak with you another time. His parents say something else, and then Rakesh responds, this time in Urdu. Then the line cuts, and Rakesh slumps down on the bed. That was harrowing. I do not know if that was the right choice, Max, but it is made. Perhaps for the best. We shall see. I think you'll find it will lift a burden from you, Rakesh. You'll see. It'll be okay, boo. I hope. Hope it works out for you, buddy. 
Yeah, okay, give me a call tomorrow and we'll run down the set list, okay? You got it, man. I think tonight I'm gonna take Rakesh out. Yeah, seems like a good plan. Memphis and I wave goodbye to each other. I know Rakesh is home, though with finals coming up pretty soon, I should probably go see him. I drop my things and head over to Rakesh's room. Hello? Come on in. I open the door, half expecting to find Rakesh naked or covered in wax or something. You mean hoping, not expecting. Instead, I find him simply sitting in a chair in front of a canvas. He smiles at me as I enter, putting his paintbrush down. Oh, Max, I am so glad you have come. You look like you're enjoying yourself. And as though a weight has come off of my shoulders, my parents are gone once again, and I think my life is looking up. Well, I'm glad you're feeling good. I thought we could do something together. I would like that. Let me put some of these things away. Thirty minutes later... Thirty minutes? Hmm. Interesting timing. Of course, you wouldn't have been able to get to the cafe, but still. Rakesh and I are down at the cafe. It's Isabella's night off, so nobody we know is here. Instead, we just get ourselves a quick snack and find a quiet booth in the corner. So you're feeling better after they left? Oh, yes. I have missed them from time to time, but I think it is better to miss them from afar. Ha, well said. So what now? You haven't got much time left in this quarter. How are your finals? I think I will do well. My art teachers say I have a lot of promise. Though one of my teachers said this only after I apologized for painting his car. You really should learn to ask people's permission before you do stuff. I think I have kept these things inside for so long. I just have a difficult time keeping it inside. Just remember not to get yourself arrested. The school board doesn't look kindly on it. It will be fine. I have plans for next year's classes, and I think that I'll enjoy them a lot more. Although I hope... I hope you will still be with me in the months to come. Bro... Sweetie. <laughs> I'm not looking to cut out. I can't wait to see what you do in the future. <laughs> From bro to sweetie. Aww. Plus, somebody's gotta do our album art, and I can't think of a better artist. Rakesh just beams at me as we finish off the last of our meal. Um. Hey. Now, maybe if you play your cards right, I'll pose for you again. Do you mean it? Would I lie to you? Maybe you can keep your art to yourself for the next week or so. We can arrange something. Do not underestimate me, Max. You will have to live up to your word. Yeah, well, we'll see. Maybe I don't have much to worry about. Rikesh looks at me determinedly, but I wink at him and he smiles at me. Finally, finishing our meal, we take the long way home. Rikesh takes my hand as we cut through the park. Hand in hand, we watch the sun set. Wow. Wow, holy crap, Rakesh. So philosophical. Ah, tonight. I mean, tonight's the big night. Everything I've worked for comes down to tonight. All right, Max, we got everything ready. We'll just about. We've got the flyers all printed up and the spare stuff all ordered. I had to get some spare amps and a few new mics. Long story short, bro, it's time to pay the piper. Yeah, yeah, alright. But otherwise we're all ready to go, right? Yeah, though I don't think Anne's paying us until after tonight, so you'd better have the money up front. Or you can call everything off. It pissed some people off, but I guess it's better than starving in a gutter somewhere. Must you always be so dramatic? We'll be fine, man. A few hours later, I'm standing in a rented party hall, watching everything get set up. It looks like Anne went out of her way to get this whole thing going right. I can see, even see, a bartender setting up shop. Hopefully she won't mind a few extra guys when our fans show up. Finally, I spot the band coming in. There you jerks are. I thought you'd stood me up. You wish. Then you would have had the whole stage to yourself. As the band files in, I'm a little surprised to see Sally helping them carry instruments up to the makeshift stage we've set up. As she dumps off her load, she gives Memphis a kiss on the cheek. Alright, I'm gonna go see if Anne needs any help now. Come see me when you get a chance after the show, huh, Stad? 
You got it, baby girl. I shake my head at the two of them. It is so cute. Ahem. <clears throat> After another hour or so, I hear Anne yelling across the hall. Okay, everyone. I'm going to open the door. Close the curtain. You're on in 20 minutes, Max. I give her a thumbs up and she smiles as the curtains close. I can hear the crowd gathering and take a quick peek through the curtain. The band is almost ready. Our sound checks are long since finished. We're just making sure everything's locked down. Good crowd out there. Looks like we got a lot of attention. Yeah, I'll bet. That flyer was badass. I grin at Memphis and close the curtain. A few minutes later, I hear Anne walking on stage. Everyone, thank you very much for coming to attend my end of the year party. I know a lot of you are freshmen like me. And if nothing else, we first year should stick together. So let's not let this year be the last we see each other. I hope we can support each other and be friends all through college. She's laying it on a little thick, but I'm sure she's just excited. Because she's so adorable. The crowd roars in appreciation of the sentiment, though. Good to hear they appreciated it. And with that in mind, here's another band fronted by another first year student just like us. So I hope you're ready to rock like never before. May I present... Back Alley Flash! The curtains pull back almost instantly and I strum a chord, taking a quick look at my band before grinning and hitting immediately into our first song. As I look over the crowd, I can tell the house is full. Everyone cheers as we really get going on our first number. This is going to be a great set. At least when I look carefully, I can spot all of our roommates here ready to enjoy the show. Even Dushnik showed up. Back Alley Flash plays his heart out for the next 70 minutes. By the end, the crowd is cheering and loving it. I think the bar might be helping a bit, as it seems like a lot of them went off to get blasted while we were playing. Still, as long as they had fun, I don't really care how they got there. <clears throat> when the crowd inevitably calls for an encore, we give it to them. Playing a fast dance number. Most of the crowd grab a partner and start dancing up a storm. I can see all the other roommates dancing together, making a nice circle. Finally, we finish our set and the curtains close on us. The band stands up, stretches out to our long set, and cheers. We did a damn fine job out there. Not bad, you stage hog. Ha, huh, not bad yourself, jerk face. I give him a quick hug before high-fiving Jerry and Slim. Memphis won't let that stand, though, and drags us all in for a group hug. Suddenly, Slim's boyfriend breaks us up by wrapping his arms around her. We all laugh as she turns to slug him one in the stomach for sneaking up on her. Luckily, she's not the only one with backstage visitors. Rikesh comes running backstage to plant a big kiss right on my lips. I smile broadly, hugging Rikesh close. Finally, we all head back out into the crowd to revel in our the adoration of our new fans. This is the true definition of a rock god. We make our way over to the other roommates who are all still gathered. Alright, how was it, really? That was a damn good show, Max. I didn't know you actually had hard work in you. Aw, oh, I'm gonna blush, douchebag. Thanks. Everyone laughs and congratulates me on a job well done. And with that, I think everyone deserves a drink. On me! Everyone cheers as we go forth to celebrate the end of the year for a little longer. Just a little bit longer. A B, I guess. I think this may be the end. Alright, kid, you've got finals next week, so I'm sure you've all got plenty of studying to do. I could try teaching you something that's going to be on the finals, but really, why should I start teaching now? Yep. Consistent to the last professor task. The professor throws a slide on the projector that just says, Study, before walking out of the room. Half the class opens their books and starts studying. The other half starts standing up to pick up their things. Not sure which I should do. Well, last time at the cafe with our roomies. Well, if I'm going to study, I'll do it in my own place. I pick up my things and head out the door with a bunch of the other students with the same idea. I make my way over to the cafe. I figure I'll get a bite while I study. Wow, Max! I guess the gang's all here. I look towards Sally's voice and see that all of my roommates really are here. 
They're all gathered around a table in the corner. Looks like even Isabella took a break from work to sit down. We all just kept coming in one by one. I suppose our great minds have thought alike. Rikash waves at me, smiling and patting an empty seat. Is everyone else's professor as crazy as Professor Task? No, he's the only asshole with tenure around here. I think the schedule's all just worked out. Wow, we almost never get to do this. This is so nice. Yeah, we should get together more often. Most of you are pretty alright. Isabella reaches out to punch me in the arm as she laughs. It's been a long year, hasn't it? It really has been. Lots of fun, though. Yeah, I think this has been the most fun I've ever had this year. I'm just happy you managed to learn something. Like one singular thing. I don't know what exactly, but... Oh, shut up. Honestly, you guys, thanks for everything this year. How about this? I know I got here late, but everyone gets a drink on me, huh? Everyone around the table cheers as I stand and go over to the counter to make a drink order. As I wait for the other clerk to get my order ready, I look back at the table with all my roommates... friends sitting around it. This has been a good year, and frankly I can't wait to see what happens next. The next two weeks fairly flew by. Between my finals and everyone else's, I barely got any time to spend with my friends. I put a lot of work into this last final, but it's not really my last one. Sometimes the idea of three more years of this seems incredibly daunting. Which is precisely why I didn't want to get caught up in this college bull in the first place. I probably wouldn't even be on campus today if I hadn't needed to sell back some books. Ah, oh, hold on. I need some water real bad. Yeah. Ah, much better. As long as I was here, though, I went ahead and printed off my grades for the year. Despite all the craziness this quarter, I've even managed to keep my grades up. It just goes to show exactly how amazing I am. I get my grades up without even trying. That's right. As I walk back toward Latin House to pack some things for a trip back home, a couple of people wave at me. I think they probably caught my show a few weeks back. I give them a wink and smile. The two seem shocked I'd wave back. One of them blushes and hides behind his friend who is busy pumping a fist in the air and proclaiming how much I rock. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I've been getting this ever since the concert, honestly. It's been great. We got so much exposure and love. I can't wait until the next big gig. The crowd's gonna be even bigger. Hooray! Finally, standing back on the porch of Latin House, I think over all the things I've done this year. Smiling to myself, I open the door and head inside. As I head inside, I see Rakesh pacing around the study nook. I don't think if you had asked me who I was going to hook up with by the end of the year, I would have seen myself with Rakesh. But as I watch him adorably pacing over some problem, now I can't think of anyone else I would rather be with. This year has seen a lot of growth from me, and of all that, I'm most glad about Rakesh being with me, and that I could help him as well. Rakesh's parents called back last week. They want him to come back late in the summer. He agreed. Max, you are home. Come up to my room. Take your clothes off. Whoa. Damn, sweetie, I missed you too. <laughs> Rikas shakes his head but grabs my hand and starts pulling me upstairs. No, no, I need to draw you. Sure. Oh, is that it? Okay, I guess I'll... Hey, I never agreed to this. Listen, I may have someone interested in my work, but I may have told them that I do it all the time. Oh, got yourself into some trouble with a bit of good old-fashioned lying, huh? Luckily, Rikash, my dear, you are dating an expert in such things. But I swear, if this drawing gets out, I will murder you and bury the body in seven different countries. Understood? Oh! Rikash nods, taking me by surprise and kissing me deeply. Yep, that's surprise. You are a lifesaver, my lovely Max. I am so glad to have you in my life. You have done so much to help me. And here you are continuing to help. I smile and lean in to give him another peck on the lips as I start taking off my clothes. And I'm happy to have you too. You know I'll help you anytime you need it, baby. 
Seriously, though, seven countries. I've got the unmarked van. <laughs> Rakesh laughs as I finish getting my pants off. Uh, I talk a good game, but I really don't know if I'm ready to be Rakesh's nude model. Then I take a good look at the pedestal he's got set up for me. Now I know I'm not ready. What the heck is happening? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> what am I looking at? Oh yes, that expression is perfect. The indecision, unsurely. Yes, hold that pose there. I can't believe I'm letting him do this. But as I watch him getting more and more consumed by his work, I realize that I'd let him do it any time he wants. That's my little artist, my creative souled boy. He's sweet and goofy as hell, but he's mine. And I wouldn't trade him for anything. <laughs> Even with that? <laughs> ah, yes, best picture. Right. So yeah, that's the last thing I remember doing my first year of college. It's been years since I thought about my college days. As I look back at the time I spent in Latin House, it was definitely the start of a new chapter for me. The world seemed full of new possibilities, and I think I really wanted to seize all of them. Hope I got all these endings! I really tried to push myself academically. I figured as long as I was there, I might as well try. My parents were pretty surprised to see the kinds of grades I was pumping out. It was pretty gratifying, seeing the looks on their faces when I graduated with a Bachelor of Arts in Music. Hmm, whatever did happen to the others? It's hard to remember everybody these days. Let's see. Anne finished her degree in library science and then just stayed on at the university. They gave her a job at their library. Last I heard from her, she was up to her fourth degree. Sometimes I feel like she broke out of one cage and got trapped in another one. But she seems happy, and I know she meets way more people these days. Isabella eventually went back to Mexico. She stayed pretty much exactly long enough to get her master's in teaching. I long ago lost count of the boyfriends and girlfriends she had during the course of college, but to her credit, she never cheated on any of them. She writes every once in a while, and promised to put me up if I ever make my way down there. Dominic finally managed to get his physics degree about the same time I was graduating. Of course, with the job market the way it was at the time, he didn't have any great prospects right off the bat. He spent the next few years continuing to provide RA functions for the university, thanks to his record. Eventually, he got a job with one of those space exploration startups. The other week, I got some spare bolts from one of their test flights. It's pretty cool stuff. Yay, I did it! Sally managed to get arrested three times during the course of college. Though it was usually just at some protest or something, so she tended to get off with just slaps on the wrist. Eventually, her willingness to be stupid in the name of a cause got her noticed by a World Animal Foundation. She eventually managed to get her degree. Now she does publicity for the Foundation. Surprisingly, she and Memphis actually stayed together through the whole of it. They really did their best together. I don't think it ended until a couple years after college. Darn, still couldn't get them to stay together. Oh, but I've left out Rakesh, haven't I? There he is. Rakesh was always grateful for my help with his parents. When he came back after spending the summer with them, the stories he told were... rough. Still, when he got home, he was about as happy as I'd seen him. He felt like a weight had been lifted from him. He'd been cut off, so he had to pay his own way, but that didn't bother him. His parents respected that he told them the truth and said if he was willing to work for it, he could stay in America as long as he could afford it. I helped him out with his bills whenever I could back then. The band wasn't making a killing, but it was enough to keep us together. He's done the art for every one of my albums. I couldn't ask for a more supportive man. The fact that he still comes out touring with me sometimes, even though he's always got some commission he's working on, I swear I love him more every day. As for me, well... Back Alley Flash definitely got a kickstart that first year of college. We kept working on our act while I was at college, but after college... The band did really well once I was out of college and could concentrate full time. Our following from the school was pretty huge. We soon graduated from Gaza's Bar to playing Honest to God stadiums, and we were filling them. Luckily, the industry being what it is, we didn't rise to instant stardom. 
I think we would have imploded. I know I missed some chances with my education, but it paid off in the band. I'm not sure if you heard our last album. The guys producing it really work some magic. If the pre-orders are any indication, this one should probably hit at number 10 on the charts, which ain't half bad. But yeah, everything else about me you probably already know. And at any rate, that's good enough for now. Oh, I feel like I've been talking about myself for ages. How about you? How was your college experience? Roommates! The end! Wow, it seems like I think Max and Rakesh actually had a better end than Anna and Rakesh. So maybe they were meant to be after all. Who knows? <laughs> anyway, that's it. That was the last end. Thank you all so much for watching me play through all these roots of roommates. And we're done nameless as well, so both these games are done. I'll be moving on to newer and grander and upsetting, maybe. I'm sure there'll be tears in the future adventures. But that is yet to come, and it'll be exciting to see. So... I hope you all will join me for that. Thank you again, all of you, for those who joined me through this series and Nameless, and I hope to see you in the next stuff I do. So, until then, guys, I'll see you later.